Hello class. So this week's assignment is going to be a stepping stone, a building block to the next two weeks assignments. What we're going to do is we're going to introduce Google Forms. And in this week, you're going to create a survey. So here I created an example survey. And I'm going to show you kind of what the end result of these surveys are. And then I'm going to show you how to create them. So I've created this example survey here. Uh, first question, of course, is uh, how awesome is Mr. Reagan? Yo, or he's, eh, he's okay. He's equal to one. Yo, that guy's the bomb diggity. So, of course, I'm the bomb diggity. So, how awesome is Mr. Reagan? Well, we're going to put him at a 10. So, then, the next question on this survey is what makes Mr. Reagan so awesome? This is a multiple choice question. His awesome videos, his great personality, his jokes, or eh, He's really not that awesome. Well, obviously, we know it's going to be his jokes because this one is definitely not right. He, by saying he's really not that awesome, is definitely not right. And then we're going to have the last question, and it is a checkbox question. So it asks, what all have you learned from his class? Oh, well, you know, hopefully you learned some computer skills, how to use Google Drive, use of technology in agriculture, and how to just be awesome. We're definitely going to check that one. So I want you to focus right here on this row. I'm going to click submit. So I'm submitting this survey. And that answer just got put in right there. So I'm going to do it again just to show you it again. Well, let's watch row five right here. And I'm going to actually change up the responses a bit. So let's say, all right, he's, he's okay. He, all right, he, you know, he's okay. He's really not that awesome. No, he didn't really learn any, I didn't really learn anything from his class. I guess how to use Google Drive. We're going to click Submit again. And we can see that that data is automatically collected right there. And it even shows my email address. So it's showing what my response was to my first question. Showed that what my response was to the second question. Third one. And then also it shows my email address. So... What Google Forms is, is a great way for you to be able to create a survey or create a data collection method in a very easy way to understand and then turn around and uh, be able to collect and organize that data. That's the main purpose of Google Forms is to be a data collection and organization system. So I want to show you today how to create an actual survey. So we're going to go in here, and this is in my file for the class. We're going to click on New. So we're going to come down here, and you don't see Google Forms. Now remember, we're dealing with Google Forms. You don't see it right here. Well, if you go to More, you look right here. Okay, here's Google Forms. So it produces a page like this. But we're going to go ahead and create a survey. And I'm going to change the color on it because I don't much like the color purple. I'm going to change it to blue. A little bit more masculine. Not that it's really all that important, but you know, it makes me feel better. So, we want to go ahead and title this survey. Let's just call it survey for now. If I can figure out how to spell survey, S-U-R-V-E-Y. So then we want to say form description. What is this? And we're going to say this is class survey. And you're going to have to be able to create one of these surveys and actually send it out to other students. Now I'm going to want you to title it. I want you to title it survey. Oh, and see, since we already typed it in here, it'll automatically update it over there. So Google Forms has many different features. The first, but the main thing is, is it's, it allows you to ask questions. So, we we're clicked up here, and well, we want to edit this first question. So we click right here. And you can double click right here and highlight this word, and then rename it. So maybe we want to answer, ask a question or something along the lines of, how effective is computers in ag? So, and we're going to set it up on a scale. So, we'll say one... One, two, five. How effective is comp in ag? 
So, I obviously have some gra grammatical errors there, but if you notice, is as I was typing, this automatically changed to a 1 to 5 scale. Google Drive is going to try and anticipate what you want. But the way it was originally set up was it looked like this before I typed in the title. So this is a multiple choice question. But like I said, we want it on a scale of 1 to 5. So you click right here and you have all these different answer responses. You can do short answer, paragraph, multiple choice, check boxes, drop down, file upload, or linear scale, which is the one that I'm looking for. So you say linear scale. Then you can adjust these and say 0 to 1. Or one to or two to ten. Well, we're gonna just keep it on with five on a scale of one to five. So how effective is this class? If we say we want one to be not very effective, or she's saying not at all. But maybe we say if you pick five, it's gonna be extremely effective. We really want to strive for this extremely effective, at least I do. And then you've got different features down here. You've got a duplicate, you've got a trash. If we click this button, it's just going to delete this question. We, cl we click this button, it creates a duplicate. Well, we don't want this one, so we're going to delete it. So it allows us to go back to editing here. Maybe we want you to require you to answer this question before you move on. So say. All right, you have to answer this question before you move on to the next one. And so now this question is done. But we want a survey of three to five questions. So we're going to come in here, and we see this little plus. You hover over it, it says add question. You can click on that. Now we'll say we want question two, what is to say, well, if you look back up here, you see how it has this red asterisk? That red asterisk means that we are requiring this class. If we took that requirement off and we look back up here, now there is no asterisk. So let's say we're going to leave it as you're not requiring the class, requiring this answer to, the, to this question. Now let's say the next question is going to be something along the lines of uh, what is your favorite Google program. We're going to make it a multiple choice question. So we could say option one, we're going to come in here and edit option one and we'll say docs. And we can add an option. And that's this add option button right here. We can say sheets. Say slides. And then we're going to go ahead and do uh, forms. Or maybe we want to say add other. To where now we can allow them to put in, they can actually type in what they want. To where whenever they go to take the survey, if they want to add another, they say, well, maybe just having all the filing system in Google Drive is their favorite part. To where they can actually type that in here. But let's say we want to go ahead and require them to take this one. Now this question is done. Now we want to add, say another one. We want to add one more. And with this one, we want to make sure that we add, say, check boxes. Then say something like, uh, what all did you learn? Then we could say something like, check all that apply. And you see this a lot on surveys. And we say, okay, we learn computer skills. Not computer skills, we want computer skills. The next option is, say, uh, Google Drive. Then the last one we're going to say, just how to be awesome. So then the person can come in here and say, all right, well, we're going to check all that apply. And we're not going to require this one. So we built a three-question survey relatively quickly. 
and let's look it over. So let's say that everything is fine. You have everything the way you want it. You want these questions to be asked this way. You want everything looks fine to you. Now, where does this data go? It goes into the response section. Well, there's nothing here yet. And a matter of fact, we can actually put all of these responses onto a Google Sheets page just like what we saw right here. We saw that as we put data into a survey, it automatically collected it here. So that's the next thing I want to show you is how to link this survey that we just created to an Excel sheet or to a spreadsheet, sorry. So we go right here and it says create spreadsheet. And then you can also do more stuff with it, which we'll look at in a little bit. So we're going to create a spreadsheet. Now, you can select existing spreadsheet or create a new spreadsheet. For this one, we're going to create a new spreadsheet. And we're going to have it titled Survey, Survey Responses. So we're going to go ahead and say Create. And as we can see right here, this is now the titles of our questions, with the exception of timestamp. What timestamp does is it shows you exactly what day and at what time that survey was completed. Now I'm going to show you another important aspect. We're going to go in and preview it. So, and this is the survey that we just created. And what I did was I came right here and you see this little all seeing eye? That's the preview button. You click on it and it brings you up to a preview of the survey. So then now you can actually take the survey. So we said, I want to know how is it effective is it computers in ag? Oh, we're going to say it's extremely effective. What was your favorite Google program? Ooh, definitely forms, since we're learning about it this week. And then what all did you learn? Check all that apply. We're going to say computer skills, Google Drive, and just how to be awesome. Then we're going to click submit. Now you can submit another response or just submit one. And you go over here and it shows the results. It showed the time it was, that the survey was completed, the first response, the response to the first question, the second question, and the third question. Well, this is really, that works really well for unanimous uh, surveys, surveys that you're not really looking to know who said it. And then on top of that, the responses are collected and shown here as well. So, it shows a Venn diagram of the uh, answer choices, it shows all that, what all these, the percentage of what was selected, but let's say, for example, you want to know who is sending you these responses, and we're going to want you to know who says what in these surveys. So you come up here to settings, there's a whole lot of information in settings, but the one that I want you to focus on is collect email addresses. So let's say you're doing a survey to figure out who can attend, say for an example, a bull sale. And you send it all to you, out to you, all your potential clients and they respond to this particular survey. But you want to know how their email address is to verify who they are. So we're going to say, go ahead and click, collect email addresses and click save. So now, whenever we go to do this survey, what it's going to do is we're going to go ahead and preview it again. We're going to take another survey. We're going to say extremely effective forms. Click all that apply, so all of them. We click submit. We go back to our, our Google Sheets. We now see that the email address has been collected in this fourth column, or this fifth column, to where it shows you who actually submitted this survey. So then the last thing that you need to do, after your survey is all complete, you need to share it. You need to click send. And we want you to send it via email. So then you click in there, type in there, who all you want to send it to. So let's say I want to send it to Mr. Jones, Todd Jones. So here we go. Well, I want to say send it to him, subject, ag survey, and then you can type in a message and then click send. And he'll get an email with this survey and asking him to fill out the survey. 